Welcome to TheaterCast. You've reached episode number 81, being recorded January 19, 2016. This is a show where theater teachers and professionals share their passion for theater trends, share practical advice and tips, and ask questions of some of theater's most innovative collaborators. I'm Nick Cusimano, one of your hosts, and happy to welcome you back to uh, TheaterCast in 2016. And joining me, as always, is my partner in crime, Danielle Phylus. A.K.A. Peter Brady. <laughs> I apologize for the uh, squeaky voice, but it's good to join everyone again. We all go through changes. And joining us, uh, uh, really excited to have with us is Rushton Hurley. Um, and actually, Rushton doesn't know this, but... Way back in my uh, 2012, kind of my, uh, I don't know, turning point year in my teaching career where um, I really got the bug on helping teachers. I've been doing some presentations in my um, own district on Google, but uh, I hadn't really gone much beyond that. But uh, I went to Ed Camp St. Louis. And I won uh, the prize, which was two days uh, to the METC conference, the Midwest Educational Technology Conference. And uh, dur during that time, Rushton was one of the speakers. And I went to two different sessions on Rushton's and uh, thoroughly enjoyed them. Uh, laughed all the way through. It was the probably the obnoxious laugh guy <laughs> laughing to it. Uh, 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 all the jokes, <laughs> and uh, uh, I love Rushton's delivery. It, uh, it's always a great time if you get a chance to see Rushton at a conference. Go, you'll have a great time, and uh, you'll go away with some great ideas to take back with you. Uh, and so it sort of got me on that path, and kind of from there I did... Uh, the Google um, Summit in Nebraska, and uh, right around that time, I think one time or another, or maybe I watched this during other things, um, there was a uh, podcast network called EdReach. The, those of you long-time listeners, uh, we started with uh, till it uh, disbanded last year, but uh, during, there was a show called EdgeCast Nation, and I believe you were a guest on there a couple of different times. And um, this provides so much uh, inspiration to teachers out there and so many ways of helping students be creative. So th there's a little intro <laughs> to uh, Rushton. Rushton, can you uh, tell us a little bit about kind of... Um, <laughs> your career, or how you kind, of, well, how, what you're doing now, and maybe a little bit of your path of how you got there. I, I, would, I would be honored to. Uh, so it it is it is totally cool to be on theater cast. Thank you guys for having me on. I hope that uh, I hope that my enthusiasm for this is properly conveyed in my shirt, <laughs> which I believe is a cool psychedelic uh, Peter Brady sixty thing going on. <laughs> theme today. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, so, so, yeah, so I, I was a high school teacher of Japanese language for, for a lot of years, and then I became a principal of K-12 school, and then an online high school in Texas in uh, 2002, and we did that for 18 months before the pilot program that the state of Texas was, was running, it came to a, came to a finish. And, and then I started doing a lot of different things, and, and had this idea for a nonprofit. Uh, and got it started in 2005, and boom, that's my number one job right now. It's Next Vista for Learning is my own little attempt to save the world from ignorance, one creative video at a time. So uh, so that, that's what I do. I run, run a little charity. Uh, it highlights videos made by teachers and students all over the place. And, uh, and yeah, it, it's actually tremendously fun work. It, it, the revenue that runs this thing comes from my own places like METC, totally cool conference, right? Uh, and, and other places and schools, and they bring in and say, talk to our teachers. And I seem to have some ability to do that in such a way that it doesn't get me tossed out of the building, so I'll go. So, yeah, that, that's that's what I do. There's other stuff. I, I kind of grew up in 
uh, Texas and then Singapore and then Arkansas, you know, big Star Wars fan, still trying to sort through my, my feelings about the new movie, you know, all that kind of thing. You know, I, I'm, You're a perfect fit for our show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of ours. But two episodes ago was Star Wars in the Classroom. <laughs> so, yes, we we are deep in the force here at the theater cast. As it should be. As it should be. Actually, one of my favorite lines from the original movie is, is, is early in the film, right? And, and Skywalker and Luke, I should say, and, and Obi-Wan are, are just getting to, you know, they, they've seen that things didn't go well for Uncle Owen and Peru, right? And then so they're making their way to find the pilot, and, and they're standing over the the, uh, the the town where they meet Solo and Chewbacca, right? And and Obi Wan says, "Well, sightly spaceport, we'll never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious." <laughs> it's like, it doesn't matter where I go now. In the back of my mind is St. Louis, Missouri. You know, and you know, film the rest of it. <laughs> There's nothing against St. Louis. There can be anything, right? So Amarillo, Texas. You know. And... I don't know if you guys use the Waze app, uh, but when the movie first came out, uh, you could use C3PO to be your narrator. Um, so um, when it would when you'd arrive at your destination, it would say, "Oh, we've made it," and then it would say something like, "What a wretched, terrible place." <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. People saw me driving and giggling to myself. <laughs> we shall surely die. I would say things like that too. <laughs> Road hazard reported ahead. R two. <laughs> it sounded a lot more like. C-3PO than I just did. Just know that. Well, Peter Brady and I had a C-3PO costume. Right. <laughs> Fusion. Mashup. Well, I'd be interested to know um, why video. Uh, you were, you talked a little bit about it at the conference where I was your creepy, obnoxious laugher <laughs> in Cincy just recently. Um, but I think that our listeners would love to hear how you sort of moved and morphed from high school teacher of Japanese language to, um, I think, facilitator of student creativity through video creation. Yeah, so so part of it for me was as a language teacher trying to figure out what worked well. And uh, and, and actually, let me preface this next comment by saying I will, I will follow this by explaining why I'm really quite excited to be on the show. Right. Um, but, but one of the things I was trying in my in my language class was skits. I do this from time to time, you know, skits, theater, right? It's got to be a good thing to do. And, uh, and I would say to my, my language students, you know, all right, we've been doing this and this and this, and on Friday we're going to do skits, and it's going to be fun. And they're looking at me like, it'll be over soon, right? And, uh, <laughs> it, you know, and, and so we'd, we'd get to the skits, and they'd do their skits, and I think to myself, man, that was lame. That was just bad, right? I wouldn't say that. I felt that was an inappropriate thing to say, you know, to students who had just performed in front of class. Okay, so who's next? You know, that's that was my code for, oh, you know, so so I was just trying to, you know, like, ah. Oh. And so, and then in 2000, right, I, I managed to talk a, a principal into funding, like, four IMAX or something like that. You know, remember the colored ones, you know, you raspberry and blueberry and whatever they were. Um, and so, you know, I got those in the back room. Learn to use iMovie. I make, I make that sound like I did it in the same day, right? I actually spent several weeks avoiding it because I thought it was going to be really hard. You know, like, you know, I do anything other than sit down to the tutorials. I was cleaning up the class. This is in summer, right? I'm cleaning up the classroom. I'm answering email. I was at inbox zero. I was, right? Out of fear of getting started on this iMovie thing. And and at inbox zero, there's nothing you can do. So it's like, all right, well, all right, I just might as well just go through this this thing, this this tutorial thing. And and so did the iMovie tutorial, and essentially got to that point and said, why was I so worked up about this? This is easy, right? So so then I started having the kids do projects, and that that first that first semester back, right? You know that fall, the kids show up and they know me, and there's only so many Japanese language teachers at the school, shall we say? Um, and you know they say, okay, uh, you know, hey, Mr. Early, you know, I was like, hey, now this this semester, no more skits. This time when you do projects, we're going to do videos, right? And they're like, oh. So the first time we did the videos, the big thing that just kind of knocked me on my posterior was that 
that first of all, the quality of their work had gone through the roof. It was just so much better, right? I was like, wow, these are much better than what you did before. The other thing was that they were celebrating each other's work. You know, they were like, yay, that was great, that was cool. And I'm, and I'm thinking, I'm not asking them to say this to each other. They're just spontaneously looking at each other and complimenting, you know, they're their peers, which, which kind of knocked, knocked me over. I was like, wow, that's really cool. How many of these kids go home and no one ever said at home, you know, that was great, that was cool. So, this is great. Now, my problem as a Japanese language teacher was that I had been confusing, you know, kind of their attempts to master language with, with what was really going on for them, which was fear of standing in front of an audience, their peers, and, and performing, right? And it's not like I was actually teaching them how to do this like they would in a proper drama class. I'm just like, go do skits, stand up there. And they're like, nah, you know, and so it, 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 was, it was something that, that kind of I figured out, oh, okay, got it. All right, so this, you know, I need to figure out exactly what kind of activity properly shows their mastery of content and what doesn't, and if it happens to spontaneously elicit, you know, kind of uh, praise for peers, all good. So, so video became important to me from that point on. But I think about, you know, kind of theater in general, right? Now I think about the idea of, you know, you know, performance. What does it mean to stand in front of someone? And and when when people are properly taught you know to see the possibilities in performance then we are teaching a certain kind of confidence we're, we're, we're teaching them to understand the role of improvement and, and and I don't mean that in any kind of you know kind of tame way most people I would guess don't actually hit a point where they understand I can improve I can they tend to think oh I'm no good at math. I am good at this. I am not good at this. And it, it's, it's the fixed and, you know, growth mindset thing, right? But, but you know, at what point can someone teach them that they, they really can improve? And it's through things like theater when, when there's this whole sense of, okay, get up and talk. Okay, well, let's let me give you some feedback. Try it again. Try it again. Try it again. And then suddenly people are like, that was really good. Oh, right? I can improve. And so that's that's part of that's part of the excitement for me is that sense of the power of performance. Um, another thing that's exciting to me about you know this this kind of discussion is the power of storytelling, because because drama is about that. It's it's about that opportunity to say here's a story and this story will make you think. It will make you feel. You know it, it's that kind of moment when 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 we go beyond just just relating kind of the moment to moment you know pieces of our lives I went here I did this I paid way too much money for this latte you know whatever, whatever it is we did and, and we get to the, this point of I saw this and it changed my way of thinking I heard this and and it it, it hit me in, in in the bottom of my heart right and, and those moments are big so there's something about video in a sense that, that gives us this chance to think okay we, we can tell these stories in powerful ways. The performance doesn't have to include the fear of standing in front of someone. And matter of fact, it may be that getting rid of the fear of standing in front of one comes from seeing people react to what you do when you craft it well, which, of course, is no different than performing well. You craft it. You practice. You, you come back at it. You, know, you get feedback. So that's a, that is a long and rambling answer to your question about why video, but, but I, I think that's... Uh, and I guess where I am, you know, kind of, kind of with that, I, I see that potential in video. I, I think you bring up a great point about about us being about uh, students and teachers students being stories, and, story. and and the power in that. The power in that. What have you, what seen, have you seen with Next Vista? What are some stories that come from that that you can share with our audience? Oh, sure, sure, sure. So, so I should be a little more detailed about what Next Vista is, right? So Next Vista is, is a library of short educational videos. These are made by and for teachers and students everywhere. And it's all free. It's free to use. It's free to contribute to, uh, contri you know, contribute the videos to. It's free to download the videos from. If you're in a school that has, like, not excellent connectivity, shall we say. <laughs> Some people are like, hey, I'm right there. You know, and, and as soon as the kids get there, everything slows to you know, if, if that's your school, then you know, one of the things that we've done to try to help you is, okay, if you get to the school first thing in the morning and things are working pretty well, you can download a video from our site and then play it from your machine if that is kind of how your setup kind of works, and that's fine. Um, we, we actually have a mission statement. I, I put it up so I can read it, so I'm going to read you my mission statement. Right? Next Vista for Learning. 
seeks to use modern technologies to help young people gain confidence with their studies, better learn about the larger world, and understand the joy and meaning that comes from serving one's community. Now, what's going on there is that this library of videos made by teachers and, and or students, right, um, is divided into three collections. One is academic stuff, so creative ways of thinking about things one might learn in school. Uh, another set is about communities around the world. And you can kind of think about that in terms of, okay, if I'm, if I'm learning about Japan, right, and, uh, and, I, and I see a picture in the textbook of sushi, that's one thing, right? But it's another thing to actually see a little video of some teenager saying, you know, this is Nagasaki, this is where I live, this is what's special to me about this city, this is what I hope to do in the future, stuff like that. Um, so the goal there is, is to try to kind of spread a little peace and goodwill that way. Um, then there's another set called uh, Seeing Service. And Seeing Service is all about the joy and meaning that comes from helping someone else. Now that's, that's something that, that, you know, a lot of people, you know, they haven't been there in their late years and not, and not understand that. But, but when you understand that you have the power to improve somebody else's life you know, through your time, your energy, uh, your resources, uh, that, that's pretty big. And so, you know, we want those stories of service to be stories that tell about people who do that and inspire young people to want to be involved in their communities as well. So, so th th that's, that's kind of a description of it. I mean, there, there are some other goals as well, you know, to learn to appreciate the work of others, you know, to, uh, to, to build on other people's ideas, properly credit your sources is, is kind of another way of saying that. Uh, because, you know, an, an educated person essentially knows what is her thought and what are other people's thoughts, right? So if she can say, this is what, what someone said, this is what I add to it, and here's how, to, how you can take a look at what the someone said so that you can tell me if you, know, you disagree with me. On, you know, so you know, being able to do that is a big, a, you know, big deal and important. Highlighting creativity is a big deal. Um, you know, I think that for a lot of kids, it isn't until they get into a space where there's there's some kind of creativity happening that you know that they kind of get excited. Um, I remember uh, a uh, like, like I had this student in the '90s, right? Uh, and and we, we he I think he graduated in '01 or something. So so he so he did these video projects, right? And uh, and I saw him years later, uh, and and he was like, hey, you know, Sherman, you know, Mr. Hurley, how you doing, right? And so so we're talking. And, and, and he said to me at one point, he said, you remember those video projects we did in Japanese? I said, yeah. He said, that, that was my favorite part of high school. And that, that kind of surprised me in a sense. You know, I mean, I knew they liked it. I mean, I liked it, right? It was fun stuff. But that, that he would give it the superlative, you know, that, that was my favorite part. To me, caught me a little off guard, you know, and, and, and thinking about it, it's like, you know, that was a chance to take what he was learning and do something interesting with it. And that's interesting. You know, having those moments to be creative, I think, is, is, is big, right? Um, in part, you know, these videos are about conveying the power of revision. You know, what, whatever it is you do, how can you make it better? I talk about this in, in, in a lot of the talks that I give. You know, you try to go from students saying, am I done yet, to here's what I've done, how can I make it better? And so I, I see video as having a special power in, in teaching kids about what revision can be, right? And then, you know, I would just say, you know, part of it's about gathering ideas about what's available, right? So, uh, you know, like one of my, one of my favorite tools as a, as a language teacher was a pair of fly swatters, right? So what, we, what I'd do is I'd put like a number of words up on, like on, on the overhead projector, right? And uh, so they'd, they'd be in kanji characters, right, on this thing. And then I'd stick, you know, two kids on either side of the screen. They'd have to bow to each other, right? And, and, and then, you know stand, and then I'd read off, you know, kind of whatever the word was. They had to identify the, the word in the characters up there, Oops, you know, and then they have to hit it, and okay, great. Everybody seemed to like that except the teacher in the room next door, you know, no need to, to go into detail there. But, you know, just all, all kinds of little things seem to become how you take one tool and do something else with it. We've got a set in our academic collection, we've got a set of careers videos, right, five minutes or less, explain these things, right? You know, they find somebody in an interview. What's your job title? What does a typical day look like? What kind of education or training did it take to get the position? And what do you love about your work? You know, that's the idea with those videos. And I find that there are English teachers who say, okay, yeah, you know, let's, uh, you know, let, let's, uh, let's assign the kids to go to that set, find three, any three videos, you know, titles that just kind of intrigue them, and, uh, and, and write about them, you know, 
what, what was strong about the video? What was weak about the video? You know, how would you have done it differently? Was that a was that a compelling portrayal of of that job? You know, would you be interested in that career as a result of this video? So there's, there's kind of all kinds of ways we take one tool and end up doing something else with it, which I think is is kind of fun as well. Did that answer your question, or did I just go so far off, you know, in, in my rambling that you know there was just no hope of getting back? It totally answers the question, and I think um, one of the things that's maybe um, even better about video than live performance is that you can do that. It's tangible, and mm -hmm. it's it's available for close inspection. Um, when you do a live theater piece, be it a little sketch or uh, one of the big productions uh, that that maybe Nick or I are trying to navigate our students through. <laughs> Once it's done that night, even if it's been videoed, it's over. It's ethereal. So there's mm. something nice about being able to sit with the video projects and investigate them, um, like you're you're talking about. I mean, it's one of the beauties of theater is the ethereal nature of it. Uh, and the immediacy of it, but well, something that video has as a pro that theater doesn't have is what you're talking about. Um, that revision process is deeper, more thoughtful, uh, it can slow down, um, and the tangibility of it is something that's exciting, I think. Yeah, that 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 pro is a pro that that kind of lives in the storytelling, you know, kind of side of what of what performance can be, right? So you know, it's one thing to to be able to to be to be part of the audience watching your own work when it's video, but that's of course different than the performance side of it in the sense that you know to 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 get up on stage is is an act of courage already, right? Uh, and 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 finding out what does it mean to you know to stand in front of others, you know, what does it mean to uh, to rise to people's expectations, to exceed them. What does it mean to recover from something going wrong, right? You know, there's, there's all kinds of little bits about life, you know, in that. And uh, and so, you know, w without a doubt, you know, when, when you talk about live performance, you know, th there's a certain set of personal experiences that become the stories for later. Don't you remember when this happened, right? You know, and, and being able to, because, I mean, with video, the only way it's going to like not be right is you just didn't take enough time to edit it, which is right. a different issue. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, there, there's um, there's beauty to both media, but uh, it the video is an exciting one for students. It offers that safety of the ability to edit out the mistakes. Um, of course, they do really love making blooper reels that are not funny to anyone but them. Uh, <laughs> I, I pretty much couldn't agree with that more. I, we, we get videos that have bloopers in them, and and we, we just kind of write the kids back, and we're like, "Please remove the bloopers and resubmit the video." Thank you. <laughs> like, oh, that is funny. You and you only. All right, stop. All right. Um, but uh, it, it does happen. You know, it, actually, that that brings up an important point about the library of videos. We don't take everything that comes to us. We got about sixteen hundred plus videos on the site. Um, and and lots and lots of really cool ones. You asked me earlier, like some stories about it. So you know, some of them are things like, you know, a group of a group of kids putting you know just a limitless time into making perfect stop motion video about the breathing system. You know, so like, wow, that's really really cool. And they're from South Africa, even better. You know, you know stuff like that. Um, but then we get stuff that's just kind of hard to pin down. I mean, like you know, <laughs> one of our early contests, we got a video in from a couple of girls, um, and the name of the video was. How to be sneaky. So you know the the video starts. Uh, you can look this up. We we've got it on the site. Um, how to be sneaky. And and and, and they they're like wear, wearing dark clothing. Wear dark clothing. You know it makes it harder for for you to be seen. And make sure you've eaten so your stomach doesn't grumble. And like walk next to the walls, right? And and and, and it's you know there's a certain amount of like which class is this part of the curriculum, right? But on the other hand, it's a clever video, right? So it's like well, what do we do with it? I don't know. Uh, and then same kind, con same contest. We had we had a video from this kid in Alaska. All right, stereotypical mounds of snow on either side of, of the driveway. He's out there. He's got like this thing on. The name of the video. I kid you not. Name of the video is how to make a sword with an oxyacetylene torch and a grinder. So you know, you know the kid gets started. He's like, oh, how to make a sword? You know, so now you got this thing going. 
And um, and I'm like, oh my god, right? And I show my buddy Todd. I'm like, Todd, what what do we do with this video? We didn't have like the uh, you know the sword making category, right, or anything like that. Uh, and he watches it. He's like, I don't know. Report the kid to the FBI. I don't know. And, and so you know, we finally ended up putting both of these videos and everything else that kind of falls into that category, how to make a peanut butter sandwich or whatever it might be, uh, into inspiration and creativity. Isn't that a great title for a collect, you know, kind of a segment of a collection? What it means is we didn't know what to do with your video, but we think it sounds wonderful, inspiration and creativity. I love it. It makes me think I love of. I it. Um, it makes me think of. Um, Makes me Super think awesome. of what happens when I mute. Awesome. <laughs> Super awesome, Sylvia. Is that, is that what it's called? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sylvia Martinez is, um, yeah. uh, you know, kind of work on you know Mickey Mickey stuff and, and and the cool you know girl who yeah, yeah no, that's a great book. She's a hero to quite a few of my uh, my students. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit, if you will, about the contests that you run. I know that word alone would perk up the ears of almost every single student at my school they are competitive little beasts <laughs> <laughs> as, as they would say at the, uh, at, the <laughs> at the at the Catholic high school where I'm where I, I visit like 25 to 30 times a year I work with all of their teachers individually it, it, it's it's a, it's a lot of fun I just have kind of a special relationship with this school but but I learned from from my good buddy Barb uh, when when she's kind of frustrated with the kid, she refers to the, that young the young man. It's a boys' school, as that child of God. <laughs> love it, love it. Anyway, anyway, so yes, contest. All right, so we we do uh, we do several different things uh, that you know projects and contests that we're excited about. One of them is is a uh, is a contest that we run three times a year, three times a year, and it's it's a uh, it's an educational video contest, and it works this way. In 90 seconds or less, creatively explain something one might encounter in school. You're like, wow, do, does it have to be more specific than that? No, right? And be, be, you know, I mean, we've had videos about oxyacetylene torches. So, so you know, whatever, is, whatever kind of works. And, and so we, I try to get teachers into that mode where they think, okay, well, what is it that, what is it that kids need to review? You know, what do I need videos for so that kids can be like, oh, yeah, that, right? You know, that kind of thing. Um, and, and we get all kinds of, we got some sets of videos that, okay, ooh, that's me, you know, uh, sets of videos that they're quite proud of. There's the, uh, the, the current educational video contest, you know, Sprouts, Creative Sprouts. And if you go to our front page, there'll be a, there'll be a, a link right there. But the idea there, you know, is just to be like, okay, you know, first of all, follow the rules. That's the big thing, right? You know, so, so essentially, if, if you're trying to win one of our contests, one of the really, really big, you know, kind of advantages you can have is to follow the rules. Thank you very much. Because if you don't, we're going to be like, we can't post it. And they're like, oh, but uh, but you know, it's still nice, right? And they're like, perfectly nice video. We ain't posting it. Didn't follow the rules, man. Nah. You know. So so we're we're like we're uptight about that. Um, specifically, where where we reject most videos is because is that they use uh, they use media from sources other than those listed in the rules, right? So, for example, you know, there's a link there. It says use of copyrighted content, you know, right there in the middle. Click, click on that bad boy right there, and that'll, that'll take us to a, a page that, that, that's really helpful because essentially it says use these sites. If, you, if it's music, use these sites. If it's sound effects, use these sites. If it's images, use these sites. How do you cite them? Take a look. And so you scroll down, and bam, there, there, there's how to do it right there. Um, and once, once kids go, oh, that's how to do it? Yeah, that's no problem. It's good. All right, now please do that so that we can accept your cool video and put it on our site and maybe you'll win something. Which comes back to the contest piece. Uh, first of all, you get 90 seconds or less to explain something cool. And then you have another 60 seconds for your credits if you need it. So you know. Um, we give away prizes. Prizes are fun. Uh, three, three major prizes. Uh, one, beautiful certificates. Got to love that. Uh, two, uh, the, there are uh, gift cards, right? So like an Amazon card or a Starbucks card or you know iTunes card. How much? Twenty-five bucks. That's not much. Better than getting hit by a truck, right? And then of course the third big prize is international glory, which we don't want to diminish that either. The winners actually get fifty-dollar things, so that's cool. Um, I would also add this: the, there's there's kind of this separate prize in in every contest uh, for the best video made using wevideo.com, wevideo.com. That site is an online video editing tool, 
And that particular tool, right, perfectly good video editor. I mean, you know, it, it's a cool site, good stuff. I mean, they support what I do, so I mean, gotta like them. Um, but, but they're great. They're great people. And they give to the best video made using WeVideo.com a GoPro camera, which is pretty darn cool, right? That's actually cooler than my prize. That's except for the internet. super cool. But then you can record what it looks Ooh. like to have international <laughs> glory. <laughs> With your POV. <laughs> IG with your POV. Now, now, I will say that that's not the only kind of contest we do. There's another one that I'm, I'm that we we've just kicked into gear right now. So we've got an educational video, kind of one that just started here in January, goes through April. Um, and then we've got another one that just started on service videos. Now, this one we're real proud of. This is called Service Via Video. And, and what this is, is we ask kids to get to know charities in their community, to research them, to, you know, like, interview volunteers, talk to these people, make a video telling their story. So tell the story of how the community, the charity works to improve the community. Uh, and the it, it, it's amazing how good some of these videos are coming in. And we have charities that contact us and say, oh, can, can we use this on our site? It's like, yes, please use it on your site. You know, tell them where it came from. Right and uh, and so they love it because you know charities by and large are well they're overworked underfunded understaffed crowds uh, that would love the idea of somebody coming in and making a promotional piece for them because they think it's going to cost them fifteen grand from some you know person out there and if they can say look some students made some videos about us that means that people aren't expecting them to be you know like broadcast quality things it's just YouTube stuff and, and it can be great so so yeah that that's a real cool thing the 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 finalists in that contest earn two hundred dollar donations to the highlighted charity right so they can make a difference for that charity right away right and then the, the winning videos also get a fifty dollar gift card for the the kid or team that made the video as well so that kind of thing so I, I put like in the uh, show notes links to you know, di you know different finalists and, and winners and things like that right and so you know get, get all that stuff out there for people and then we do other projects as well. We got we got another one that uh, that I'm really excited about. We're we're launching probably what is probably the biggest project we've ever done, which is uh, is all about English language videos. So if you're if you're a speaker of another language trying to learn English and you look online for videos to help you, it's all stuff you have to pay for, right? Or kind of onesie twosie videos out there. And there's this guy I know who has been his name is Bud McKenzie, which is a cool name. Right? And, and Bud has been, I, he's a retired lawyer, he's been to Afghanistan 20 times in the past 12 years. Dedication, right? So anyway, I mean, the guy's amazing. You know, he's, he's, he's like built schools over there, helped you know, with scholarships for, for kids. To do what. The guy's amazing. And so I'm talking to him at one point. He says, you know, we have this problem of some of the families in these villages, they don't want to send their, they just really don't want to send their girls to the school. But we want the girls educated. So they're going to send the girls to the local library. So we're going to we're going to ha have these these devices, these Android devices, right? That have tons and tons and, uh, and tons of educational videos on them. And so we're going to put a bunch of Khan Academy videos on them, and blah 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 blah. They're like looking desperately for people who can translate Khan Academy videos into Pashto and Dari. You know, if you know anybody, you know, let me know, right? Um, but they said we really need some videos about learning English. And it was at that point I'm like. Let's try to make it happen. So I, you know, I contacted some schools and said, you know, could, you know, would you be interested? Could, could a group of kids like kind of buy into the idea of making a lot of short videos? And they're like, what do you mean by short videos? I'm like, 20 to 40 seconds. You know, we just we pick, you know, a, a high frequency vocabulary topic. You know, modes of transportation, rooms in the house, you know, things you see at school. Doesn't matter what it is. Um, and and then you say, okay, I'm going to make these really short videos, and I'm going to make two of each video like the video and the subtitled version of the video because for language learning purposes, purposes you might want to watch the subtitled version a bunch of times and then switch over to the non-subtitled version, right? So, so that's how we're, we're thinking of doing this. We're, we're, we're very early on in this, but if you've got schools that are like, we want to get involved in that, then give them my contact info and by all means, I'm happy to do it. You can, you can also go to nexus.org and contact us. Ding. Right there, so that's all good. <laughs> I'm imagining a I'm little spark came off of your tooth as you take Well, that is that a is lot of work. My, this might be a totally inappropriate question, but how do you screen all of these? When you say we, how many are you? 
<laughs> oh, it's the royal we. It's me, right? Um, well, well, well. Truth be told, there there are some people who who kind of help me out with different things. Like I got um, there, there's a wonderful guy who's helping me out with this English project, and his name is Gene Tognetti, uh, who who's one of the main people on the Common Core Ed Tech blog, right? So he uh, he puts out all kinds of good things for people out there. So he's working with me on that. Uh, and then the whole idea with these videos, of course, is to crowdsource it. So if we can get you know, multiple schools involved, we've got a couple of schools up in Lloydminster, Canada, all right, cool folks, uh, in Oregon, you know, Corinne Richards, you know, working with us on this. And, and the idea is to try to get as many people interested in, in being part of that as possible. We're building off of a model. We've got a bunch of Spanish language videos, for example, that were created by kids in Mexico. So, you know, the, the, the alphabet... Uh, numbers, um, you know, like places in town, animals, uh, you know, all of this stuff, and and you know, little interviews of kids where they're talking about sports or pastimes, you know. So we, we we've got we've got cool Spanish language videos, and, and this is this we, we think is kind of a natural evolution. We did do I, I should say we we did do um, a set of alphabet English alphabet videos with a bunch of kids in 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 Birmingham, England, right. So, so it's, it's all these these ten year olds from with West Midlands accents, right? And oh my God, they're the best! So, so you know, you watch the little videos they make. They 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 had like five iPads, so they just said, okay, you know, you six here, you six here, you six here, and and they had to think of things around the school that start with that letter, right? Or in the case of X or whatever, you know, something else. And uh, and then you know what you had to do is go take a picture of it. And then write a sentence, write a good sentence, get it checked by the teacher, and then record yourself saying the sentence. And they ended up with these really cool videos. And so you're watching like the C video. The C video. I talk about the C video all the time because I think it's just so much fun. Like, this little boy, you know, they're, they're taking a picture. They got all these murals around the school. It's an awesome place, Paganal Primary School. Um, and and like it's a picture of an alligator, right? And the kid says, "This crocodile has scary teeth." And you're like, that's so cool. Right, and and then the next one is there, there's this picture of a castle on the wall, right? And a little girl's voice comes on. Sometimes princesses live in castles. <laughs> it's, it's, it's wonderful stuff. So we love having sets of videos, yeah. Like in the last contest we did, um, the fall contest, the educational video contest, and we had a, we had a school, a Gaston Day School, all right, in Gastonia, North Carolina, and and a bunch of different. Like all, so we were seeing that kind of thing. Yeah. We do. I just experienced uh, some wacky dropout. Was that me or you? <laughs> uh, we lost Rushton for a little bit there. Okay. Uh, now, now I did stop speaking briefly. I mean, you know, that, that does happen on occasion. You might wonder whether that ever happens given, given the nature of the interview, but, but but it does. Nevertheless, so so yeah, so I mean, you know, the, the different different project with the alphabet videos and all that kind of stuff. I mean, this is anything that, that anyone's interested in, you know, that I talk about, and they're like, I can't find it. Just email me, right? You know, info at nextvista.org, and, and that, that that works just fine. I, what I really like, and this seems to work for me, um, when I have to create, is I work much better with give me some parameters, and I'll take it to whatever direction I want to within those parameters. Yeah. But I think it's really good that you put those really tight time parameters in there because then that forces people to be, be creative. And, okay, I have this time limit. What? What can I do within the time li limit to get my story, my idea, my thought, my feeling on the subject, whatever it may be? Um, and I think also um, video offers a very interesting way when you deal with editing because um, on stage, <laughs> as Danielle and all of us know as a public speaker, uh, Whatever comes out of your mouth, you got to work with. <laughs> um, but with the video, you can you can re-edit, and you know, if you do a, a cut of a look of an eye eyebrow up, and you put the eyebrow up before that happens, and then you go to the eyebrow, but then you have a cutaway to something being spilled. But if you put the spill first and then the eyebrow, 
the, totally two different meanings. And I think um, I think giving okay. students these skills now, is, so much of our world is a video. I mean, it's it's communicated. It's how the students communicate. I mean, they're creating stories all the time. And Snapchat, the things are called stories. Um, I don't. Snapchat's not my thing, but um, it, it, it is our students' thing, and they kind of understand that world, and they're creating short videos, whether we realize it during our classes all the time. <laughs> well, you, YouTube is the second largest search engine. That's right. So, I mean, they're looking, that's where they want to go for information. Me too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you can learn anything on, on, on YouTube. I mean, I mean, you really can't, for, for better or ill, right? And and that can be the launching kind of pad for all kinds of wonderful discussions about what what does it mean to to teach someone else really, you know this particular video about changing a tire right, How, is it is it well done for whom you know I mean you know th these kinds of questions are wonderful because you know as you're talking about you know everything's video. Every organization needs someone who can compellingly tell the story of that organization. Right? Everyone, everyone needs it. Whether you're you're Exxon or you're you know like, you know, save the uh, save Central Park or you know whatever it is you know downtown. That that whole possibility that we have now of, of getting kids to understand the power that they have through through effectively being creative and using kind of the digital media tools that are now available. It's a beautiful thing that that's new. You know, I mean, I mean, Apple gets credit for this with, with iMovie. I'd say, you know, in, in uh, 98, 99, whatever it came out, right? And uh, and good, good, good stuff to them. I mean, other corporate practices make me go hmm, from, but 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 that I love that. So there you go. And now it's easier than ever. Um, I'm talking to you on my little Chromebook right now, um, and. Uh, I uh, I did a, a breakout session, uh, if you're familiar with Breakout EDU, um, to tell my theater students that they got into the Thespian Conference. So right. I told them they had a big prize waiting for them in this box, and I just recorded them the whole time. And I went home that night using Wii Video uh, and... Uh, uh, made of just cobbled together a little video with some of the wee video music that was available to me and posted it and uh, they went wild even though they had just been through that <laughs> um, and I was able to just say so how did you do that it looked so good well, I remember to hold my cell phone not vertically first of all um, yeah. pet peeve sorry and uh, and used wee video that's right <laughs> Mm -mm. <laughs> There's some funny videos about that too. Uh, <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> yep, that's the one. Um, and I like. Um, uh, I know Screencastify. You were talking about um, Snag it. Heck, you mm -hmm. can even edit, as Nick can tell us. Um, he's more um, adept at it than I am. Right in YouTube Editor now, mm -hmm. so anyone can yeah. be. An there's editor. Some, <laughs> there's some great free ones out there. Um, if you're dealing with <clears throat> more text, Biteable's kind of a cool one that I just came across. Mm -hmm. If you are doing the end of the year slideshow of pictures, um, Animoto, Animoto. But get the educator account. <laughs> Don't pay for it. Get the educator account. Um, we video. I mean, to me, the two best are that are most. Uh, or the free and you can do with is we video. You just have to be careful on your export time. <laughs> and don't yeah. export. Share it with others. Although right now out. they had a um, they had a deal going on. I don't know if it's still going on. It was like ten bucks for you got. I got a lot more time than I would. Oh great. Have. Yeah. So, um, the YouTube editor's free and I've used that a lot, um, especially when I've been on the go. They just killed YouTube my webcam, which. Oh. Well, I, I, this is this was such a cool thing. Right? YouTube.com/slash my underscore webcam, and you know if you're on a Chromebook, for example, suddenly you're able to like, just like record straight into YouTube using. It was brilliant, and 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 why did they kill it? They said two reasons. One was like, well, not many people are using it. That's because you didn't tell anybody, you know. <laughs> and, and then 
the other one was, well, it's based on you know older technology that's not completely secure, which, which seems to be like the standard explanation for any company ever killing anything. So uh, <laughs> perhaps uh, probably they probably I mean, use Adobe Flash. <laughs> <laughs> well, Google people are smart enough to figure out how to do it differently, so I'm hoping that there'll be like a new iteration of my webcam that they'll tell people about sometimes. Well, some of my kids even did a Google Hangout on air with just themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so it had the little watermark of the Google Hangout on it, but they used that and then dumped that up into YouTube and then edited that with YouTube Editor. Um, I wish I could say I thought of that, um, but I didn't. I just... <laughs> said, do this, and that was mm -hmm. what their workaround was, which is kind of brilliant. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of cool, or explain everything is another great one. Um, there's some stuff on the iPad. I'm, I won one at EdSearch, so I'm, I'm delving in the Apple world finally. Oh. Um, and the, so there's a couple of cool, create. well, of course, iMovie and doing it on iPad. Yeah really easy. You just have to have an iPad. <laughs> and, right. and sometimes that can be a challenge. <laughs> that um. side of the force, if you will. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. I loved um, when I was a Mac girl, it was that was what kind of got, like you, Russian, kind of got me hooked on the whole idea of being able to make things yeah. um, yeah. and being able to pu push it out so easily to an audience of more than just me and my mom, <laughs> me and my teacher. <laughs> well, I even like that you can do on Instagram those little 15 second video clips and it's really sort of simplified editing but you can press the record button stop, go somewhere else, press the record button stop and have little 15 second nugget videos that you can push out too and um, some kids get very creative with that too. Absolutely. Um, one of the other things that uh, we had or emailed a little bit back and forth is about the rotary road I have to say this correctly rotary e club of Silicon Valley is another project that uh, you've been working on. Can you share a little bit with us Absolutely. about that what, what that is? D delighted to talk about that. Um, so you know, I think I think we all get to points where where we stop and we think to ourselves, what else can I do? I mean, even if you're busy, it, it's not it's not so much a quantity of things, but what else in the sense of okay, you know, I, I teach kids, I, I I give time to my my school, you know, and and at some point we have to stop and say, okay, well, we're also capable of of being something more to the community, and so people will do things like join service clubs, you know, so you, you like Seroptimist, Kiwanis, Lions, um, you know, Rotary, and these are great organizations, but often teachers never think about it because they're like, oh yeah, but but they meet Wednesdays at lunch, that's a non-starter for me, you know, that kind of thing. Well, um, Rotary kind of, in 2004, believe it or not, started a pilot project that went for six years on, you know, can we have online clubs in Rotary? And in like 2007 or so, I joined the Rotary E Club of the Southwest USA. Um, great group and all, you know, enjoyed being part of that. A group of us from that club uh, left to start, help start the Rotary E Club of Silicon Valley uh, almost exactly a year ago, right? I think it was, you know, add one week to today, and, and exactly a year ago was, was when, we, when we launched. This is at SiliconValleyRotary.com, by the way, right? SiliconValleyRotary.com, and and it's a Rotary Club, but it's an online asynchronous Rotary Club, which means that you do these meetings anytime between Monday morning and Sunday night each week. So the flexibility is tremendous, right? But you're but it's Rotary, so you're working with all of these amazing people who are dedicated to making their communities better, which is really fun and cool. Uh, and we got like 30 members, right? You know, just just a wonderful group of people, and they're not just in Silicon Valley. We've got Let's see. We got a we got a member in Utah, a member in Michigan. We've got a, a member in uh, Tokyo, a member in uh, Nairobi, a member in Cape Town. Yeah, so we got we got all these folks, right? Yeah. So like um, uh, the the screen share that uh, that we got going on over there with uh, with Danielle is is us the us the club. Click on uh, click on current meeting, for example, and what you'll see is that this is like a 45 minute meeting, right? So 
it, there's about 15 minutes of reading, you know, kind of things and watching some things, followed by a 30-minute hangout on air, right, where we've connected with some cool person from somewhere in the world, telling us about some amazingly cool thing, and boom, that's it. So it, it's, it's kind of that chance to get people who otherwise might never have considered joining a service club to be like, wow, I can be part of something really cool. And, uh, and it, it's huge fun. And so I've, I have enjoyed being a part of that. Uh, I'm, 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 I am, I'm its president. I'm its charter president because I had been president of, of that, the other club. Uh, and so they needed somebody who kind of knew about it to kind of start going. And so I did. Um, and, uh, and, and it's just huge fun to, to connect people to these, these, these moments of positive energy to people. I mean, because that's the thing about these, these service clubs is people, you know, you know, people essentially get together and talk about how can we make that happen? How can, how can we do this? What can we do? Like, like for example, we're going to bring some people together to start mentoring um, entrepreneurs in places where, uh, you know, they have some kind of business idea that, that's, that's designed to improve the community in some fashion, but they need some people to, to give them some ideas and, and say, hey, think, make sure you're thinking about this. And, uh, and so anyway, so, you know, we're going to be doing that for the first time in February. That's cool. But we do traditional stuff as well. You know, get together, you know, go help with, uh, you know, the, the you know, California Coastal Cleanup or, you know, help with, you know, this uh, fundraiser for, you know, this Justin's House, this really cool thing that started here last year designed to help kids who are addicted, you know, to, uh, uh, to uh, alcohol, right? And so, I mean, just, just lots, of, lots of fun, cool service-related stuff. And so SiliconValleyRotary.com. I hope people will give that a look because... We're real proud of it. Well, Russian, you just <laughs> amaze me with your ability to uh, send such positive energy and creative force out into the world. Um, it just thank you for your hard work because it helps inspire uh, teachers like me and Danielle and uh, our listeners because I th it's... It's great that someone's out there pushing for positive change and that we can uh, go to the drinking fountain <laughs> and rejuvenate. <laughs> um, Man, nice. uh, because I, you know, I, I think we can get really stuck in the negatives uh, sometimes in education, um, and it's great to be reminded of all the positives and the power of education and the power of connections and the power of uh, positive uh, change in the world. So thank you again. <laughs> hey, my, my, my pleasure. And, and I, 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 I want to toss out, you know, speaking of like these, you know, kind of positive changes and, and especially potential in education. Um, and, and I hope I'm not like, you know, uh, uh, jump on the gun on something, right? I'm so excited right now. I don't even know what you're going to say. <laughs> What is he about to say? Whatever it is, yes. <laughs> so, so, you know, you, you were talking earlier about some sites that, that, that are you think are really cool. You know, the you know biteable and stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a there's a site that I want to I want to toss. I mean, like we video, totally cool. You know, SiliconValleyRotary.com, totally cool. My little charity, nextvista.org. Please come take a look. All right, but but there's this other one as well. Um, sound trap. If you haven't heard a sound trap, you got to get it. You guys know about this? Um, well, okay. Here's an interesting story. I, uh, I, I have uh, <laughs> I've met the CEO because <laughs> I was yeah. when they first when I caught them. I want to say it was like September, October. I'm like, oh my god, this is the best thing since sliced bread. People have to use this. Yeah. You can do you create your own podcast, multi-track editing, and Chromebooks. And so I did a blog post about them um, and. Met one of their pers uh, their contact people, Frederick, and then I was at ISTE and met the um, uh, C Pear. the co-founder Per, and I uh, got <laughs> a, a sound trap <laughs> lanyard and got to meet him and uh, I checked on one of your tweets at FVTC, redid that, <laughs> shared more again, just to remind, I, I, it's one of my, I think it has so much power, and um, they're really good to educators, and oh, offer totally. a lot of... And, and, in the last week, as, as of this recording, they have launched Soundtrap for Education, right? So, 
all of these kind of tools for for podcast. I mean, they've kind of figured out that they're more than just wildly cool collaborative music stuff, right? Mm -hmm. you know, that kid who's struggling to learn to read, if that kid will record him or herself reading, and then you know the teacher can talk about that, and then the kid can record, you know, again and see the improvement, and suddenly figure out, wow, I'm not doomed to being a bad reader. I can actually get better. Any recording tool will do that, but the, you know, here you can kind of add these cool loops on either side or whatever you want to do. It, it's it's a fun one. It's a real fun one. So the, I, I can I can tell, you know, just and, and you talk to, you know, tall Swede Frederick and you're like, This guy's amazing, right? And so I totally get you. <laughs> and if I recall, Nick, you were way robbed in a demo slam at one of the tech conferences because you brought in Soundtrap. And yeah. the who's and the Oz in the audience were palpable. Uh huh. You were robbed, man, times a fi. Come on. <laughs> well, that would have been that yeah, and, uh, and I even threw in the friends. Breakfast Club you and did. Bender at you know in Chicago. What could be better? In that school. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I'm not better. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one one year I'll I'll win a demo slam there. <laughs> I don't know. I have to come up with. Yeah, I almost think you need to stand on your head. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I need a rocket pack or something. I'm yeah. willing. I'm willing. <laughs> yeah, that's actually it's my go-to demo slam when I'm at uh, uh, at Tech Team Summit. <laughs> I do my little soundtrack because I uh, I used it to uh, do um, a sound effect in a show. Did a nice. voiceover with it. Um, to uh, don't you forget about me? Um, For midsummer, and, and, and the, the students from the show record their voices um, as part of it. So I think it's a simple mind, great thing. Yep. Uh, well, thank you so much, Rushton. This has been fantastic, and I love that you meet students where they are um, and help them be articulate there mm -hmm. in so many ways. Well, that the the effort of theater teachers everywhere, right? And you just described it, and uh, and, and the fun the fun of this kind of thing, fun. Uh, being you guys, being able to go to you know EdTech Team Summits, which are really fun as well. I mean, just in conferences anywhere, you're meeting teachers wherever it may be. People share cool stories, and mm -hmm. you know we talked about that on the front end. You know what 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 what's this about? You know, it's, it's about confidence, it's about performance, it's about sharing stories. And and the fun of education, if a teacher will let him or herself be in that space of having fun by exploring and trying things out and turning to the kids and saying, what do you think, guys? If we do this again, how can we make it better? Any ideas? And suddenly, you know, four, four bad ideas, and then one kid says something to change your professional life, right? So you know, it's just it's, it's that. You know, we just, we just keep sharing stories and all the better. Um, that's just great. If people wanted to find you, can you list off some of the best ways that they can find you on the interwebs? Yes, yes, yes. So um, easiest way to get to me is through nextvista.org. Uh, just contact is at the top of the page. Um, you can also find me on Twitter, Rushton, H-R-U-S-H-T-O-N-H, -H right? Uh, and like anybody's Twitter account, you look at the Twitter account, you see what I tweeted, and if you think that's worth following, then follow. Otherwise, you know, I get. I was a little late to Instagram. I'm at Rushton was taken. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for getting that. Um, and uh, but that that is that is my 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 Instagram. You know, got a feed on that. But yeah, all of those are cool. I mean, you know, just. And, and here's the thing: if if you Google my name, it's only Rushton Hurley is is not. Common name, you know. So um, you can find me, right? And I have a, just a little interesting side note. Maybe you have distant relatives who uh, stopped in Missouri on the way, because I did my student teaching in Hurley, Missouri, which is oh. between Clever and Crane, uh, in Southwest Missouri. I'm <laughs> so maybe trying some... to make a bad pun out of Rushton and Hurley, and just do it yourself. Southwest Missouri. Mm-hmm. Just outside of Springfield. I, I went. I went to junior high school, two years in junior high school in Fayetteville, Arkansas, in Northwest Arkansas. So, so not too far from Springfield. No, no, not not that far at all. So very, very cool. It's a beautiful part of the country too. The Hurley <laughs> domain of influence increases. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> and Danielle, how can we find you on the interwebs? Uh, you can find me at Ms. Phyllis, M-S-F-I-L-A-S, on both Instagram and late Twitter, or you can go to my blog, edunerdhq.org, and see all my thoughtful musings about everything nerdy and educational. Big Nick! I know they're aching to find you. How do they do well, that? Well, they can find me on Twitter at EdTech, the number four theater, and uh, I can follow you back again because I hit this magic number where <laughs> for a while there was limited uh, the number of followers, but now I can continue to follow more people and not be punished by Twitter. Um, wow. Uh, I think I created an Instagram account. I just don't have time <laughs> to keep up with it. So, um... <laughs> Twitter is a good way. You can find me on Google+. Plus. You can email me. You can find me at my blog, EdTech, the number four theater. And, of course, you can catch us at theatercast.org. I uh, want to thank Rushton again so much for uh, the inspiration, the entertaining stories, the making me <laughs> laugh. Uh, we, we were muted just so that we wouldn't uh, continue to interrupt. But you can see our smiling bobbing faces throughout the whole, whole show if you watch it. Uh, uh, you can raise, you can raise money for the theater cast by having the, the Nick and Daniel bobblehead. bobblehead. <laughs> <laughs> I just sound like a drill thrill when I laugh right now. I hid it from you. <laughs> yeah, the, those, those will be collector items. Those will be collector items. <laughs> I would buy that for I myself. Buy that for myself. And be sure to join us Sunday. Uh, we have James Sanders from uh, Breakout EDU. Uh, also from, he worked at the White House and Kip Schools and so many other things. Um, and talking about Breakout EDU, which um, Danielle and I were one of the first ones to experience at the Illinois EdTech Team One. And I, so we'll find out more about that next week. And totally awesome for theater teachers. And I'm working on a game on my own. I have to get it set by early February because I'm a tested at Camp St. Louis, either doing with uh, Romeo and Juliet or Midsummer Night's Dream, where students oh, can. Oh, we need to talk if you're doing R and J. Okay, well, then uh, Danielle and I will be talking in the, in the background, not on air, um, to talk some ideas, because I think if we had students um, portraying characters, it's that extra tie-in that theater students need, but also would be great for students uh, to break out EDU and the general ELA part of Shakespeare. So be sure to join us next week. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.